Hello. Well, it's been eight months since I last did a autism and employment video. This is like an ongoing series. I've done two of these so far, I think, about two, and this is like the third one or something like that. I could be wrong, but yeah. And uh, yeah, pandemic. Yeah. Mm. Well, <laughs> I'm basically going to talk about what it's been like on furlough in the pandemic, but also kind of other employment stuff that I haven't really spoke about before. So, oh, when was this? Like, 2019, I feel like. I think it was like, I think it was pretty much around about April, May, 2019, but it's been that flipping long that I just, I don't know anymore, but anyway. I, yeah, so in my hometown, there was a company advertising a sub-editing role. And I was like, oh my God, like they, <laughs> I was like, oh wow, what are the chances of there being a sub-editor role going at a company in my hometown? I was like, wow, what are the chances? and I didn't really look into it much I just knew that it was like um, an educational company basically is all I can say and I was like okay it's a job you know I'll uh, I, I like sub editing I did a sub editors like two day course which is what I was recommended to do from a lot of different journalists working in the industry and stuff like that so I was like yeah brilliant it's in my hometown you know, why not go for an interview? So I went for an interview and it was all right. I mean, the girl that interviewed me was like something like two years younger than me. So I was a bit like, mm, okay. I was a bit like, oh, okay. <laughs> if, anyway, so I came out of that interview anyway and I thought it went pretty well. And they, I don't know, I got like a phone call and it wasn't what I expected. And the company were like, oh, um, we don't think you'd be suitable for the sub-editor's role. Um, and I was like, why? And they're like, because someone more experienced and older came along and got the job. I was like, okay, fair enough. And they were like, however, we like you as a person and we think you really nice and your skill set is really good and I was like okay and they're like so would you like to do um, some kind of internship where you would then work up to doing that role or something and I was just like um well um and I wasn't sure and this was the time when I'm just going to say it, just going to be honest, this was a time when family and friends and everyone, literally everyone around me was putting an enormous amount of pressure on me to get a job. And it made me scared and upset and it made me feel like I just had to apply for anything. It was just horrible. But I've learnt now that it's not a good idea to just apply for anything, really, you know. And um, so they said to me about this internship and I was like, oh, I don't know. And um, they were explaining the requirements, and they're like, "Oh, you would, um, you'd have to have." And they were telling me, and I was like, "Oh, um, yeah, I do not have the capability really to do math, to do mathematics. Like, I don't have a good GCSE in math. You know, everything else I do, and I've got a media degree, I've got a college, national extended diploma, blah blah blah, all these great things." However, I have dyscalculia, which is a mathematical form of dyslexia, which is how I like to call it, officially diagnosed when I was 18. So, no. And they were like, oh, um, you'd have to do functional skills maths to do it. And I was like, no. And they were like, but we would tutor you, we would support you. And I was just like, oh, God. And I was really just, oh, 
I, I, I wasn't... Mm. And this company were like an external training company. And these phone calls with them... Oh, it, it's enough to make anyone want to like... Cry on the floor and just despair. Which is what I did a few times. Um, they were like... I can't say the name of the company, but it was like... They'd call me, it would be a guy, be like... Hello, this is this name training, okay? And I'd be like, okay. And um, I'd be talking, and they'd tell me what the requirements are, and I'd be like, no thanks. And they'd be like, oh, um, there's a few red flags. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to get the red flag, I'm going to get the pole to the red flag, and I'm going to shove it right up, you know, basically. I wasn't very happy. And I was just despairing, and... Um, they were like, can you come to this company that I went to the interview for and do two days, like, as a trial? And I was like, okay. And uh, before that, they got me to write an article about anything, like a piece of writing, and I was just like, oh. And I said to my friend, um, I'm not friends with this person anymore, but I said to this friend, oh my god, but they're asking me to write something, and I can, but I just, I'm in such panic, and I'm so stressed out and so upset that I just got, I can't do anything. I feel like my brain is just in a whirlwind. Just, not in a whirlwind, but like, it just felt awful, like I couldn't do anything. And um, she basically helped me with this article, and I was really grateful. But, um, like, she calmed me down, and we sorted it out. And, um, so, I was just despairing, but I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the, this two-day trial thing, see how it goes. But when I went to, like, buy clothes for it, because I didn't have any smart trousers at the time, I was walking around, and I, I was with my other friend, and she was like, oh, um, so why are you buying these? And I explained, I was like, oh, I'm going to work in an office for two days. And she was like, you, in an office? I was like, oh, no. She was like, I don't think, I don't think this is really quite, you know, right. And I was like, I don't either, but I have to try it because people are putting such an enormous pressure on me to get a job that I just, oh, I just have to do something. So I was, you know, I was like, okay. So sorted that out. I went to these two days and it was in an office, obviously. And um, yeah, the people were nice. But, mm, the fact that I did two days of unpaid work for them, you know? They were getting me to like learn about something and then put it into a piece of writing which was fine and then they got me to do like, there was a poster and they wanted me to like digitally create this poster online, like on the computer but I'm not very good at that, so literally how it looked on the page was how I made it look on the computer. Like, I just couldn't make it any better. I was like, well, I, I, that's just not my skill set. But the writing was no problem, and the rest of it was no problem, and it was alright. But I was like, well, I don't really want to do this every day, and the fact I have to do functional skills maths is enough to make me want to, like, just jump off a bridge. <laughs> Put it that way. It caused a lot of, um, upset. And um, they ended up letting me go early on the day because I'd completed everything basically. And I was like, okay, fine. And I left. But, oh, and then after that, they were like, no. And I was just like, that's fine because I don't want to be there anyway. <laughs> and um, at my cinema job now, I bumped into someone that was doing that same internship because there were a few of them there they were doing that and I says to him oh do you still work at this place it was like oh no it, no it's awful like, I didn't like it no hell no you know I was like oh okay thank you know and this was when I was still really naive about jobs and I was letting everyone's um disapproval get the better of me like people going why have you got a job yeah oh, because I'm not kidding you like multiple times a week people approach me and go, oh, have you got a job yet? And they're like asking me questions and 
you know, it's just, it's really, um, and it's caused like a negative effect with like self-esteem. Like I, I like myself as a person, like I do love myself, I think I'm, I think I'm alright. But the whole thing where I don't have a proper, proper career, it just, it ruins me, it completely ruins me, like it makes me not like myself, it makes me put myself down and when there's like friends, family members, people in general going, oh have you got a job yet and all these, I'm like well, we've been in a global pandemic for almost two years, like why aren't people cutting me some slack and going, oh yeah, of course you haven't been able to get a job because of the pandemic, like why are people, like people tell me it's a bit like telling me to drive down a road that is closed or like telling me I can get through a, a no through road or like a cul-de-sac and you can't it, it's a bit like that you know it's it's just awful it's just so ridiculous and I you could probably tell that I'm pretty exasperated at this point but um, I'm not giving up that's the main thing all I can do is keep going um, yeah I even as some of you know I did do functional skills maths for a few months just because of self-esteem issues really, like self-doubt. I was just like, oh, you know, I'm not going to get a job without this, but, but I can and I will. You know, I can't help it if I've got like dyscalculia and stuff like that, autism and all that. You know, so there's that. It's great. I'm just, I'm going to keep going. It's like, I've told this story on my YouTube channel before um, about when I was about six years old I was like locked up in like a room in like a pupil referral unit we call it in England um, and there was a big window and I in my imagination I go up to six year old Steph as 25 year old Steph now and I go up to the window and I think to myself I can't go up to that window and tell that little girl who is so scared about everything that I've given up that when that when I grow up I'll, I've just given up because then that, that won't you know she'll be like well what's the point and then I'm like well yeah what is the point there's no point but there is a point you know I don't want to in my imagination or when I go to sleep at night and I have a bad dream I don't want to you know meet my six-year-old self and tell her that I gave up you know that's the biggest thing. I, I want to, I just want to get through it. I just, I know one day I will get something, you know, which is we're in this pandemic. I make jokes about it. I call it a panorama. I call it a panini. It's, it's just a big pain in the, <laughs> it's just a big pain in the backside, basically. <laughs> I think all of you couldn't relate and agree and so many people have like lost their jobs and stuff in this pandemic but anyway so being on furlough at the cinema um well <laughs> it's amazing that I kept my job there so lucky I'm really lucky to even get the job like the people there say it's easy to get that job but they might not have experienced the um real difficulty in getting a job before there you know like I really I I um the best I could get was like three month temporary Christmas jobs before there and this is like oh you can stay here as long as you want until you want to leave like it's only four hours a, a week which isn't a lot but they can give me more hours at any time they need me so that's good that helps you know but it's not well paid and it, it, it's not like retail jobs in general are not well paid like everyone knows that it's not really a secret but um yeah the people in my cinema job if you're watching you probably are they're all so nice oh my god they're all so nice to me and I'm just like thank you thank you so much oh um which is it's really nice really that's that's a perk of the job you know and um, I get along with the people there and it, it's nice and it's local as well so that's good you know I'm waiting for the jobs market to open up more so that I can get a job that I properly trained in like one that I wake up in the morning and I think yeah I really want to do this you know 
I've learned not to settle for any job. Like someone the other day on LinkedIn offered me a social media role, which is a little bit, it's a little bit further out from where I am, but that is no problem because I will move to anywhere where the job is. I've said that before, but I don't want to do a social media job or a digital marketing job because they are the most common media jobs on the, on the, on the jobs market basically. And I don't want to just do any job. You know, I want to, I hope everyone's dream is to have a job where they wake up and they're like so happy and excited to go there. It's not always like that, but you know what I mean? That's like the goal, you know? But yeah, you know, I've had some real near misses to jobs. I've been like this, cl this close to working for Nickelodeon on a digital intern role in Camden, London. I got this close and that was like 2018 I think something like that and I got this close to like a digital role at the Telegraph newspaper in London and it went to the second interview and they said to me oh do you have any questions and I was like yeah what's the salary for it and they're like oh isn't it listed on the job description I was like no and they're like oh we don't know and I was like well if I don't know what salary I would be on then how would I be able to factor in the cost of living, the cost of transport, everything? How? How? Because where the Telegraph is, I can't say where it is, I don't think, but it's by a pretty famous London landmark, put it that way. You can't get, you can't get an apartment or a flat there. You'd have to commute in, you'd have to like, 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 you'd have to be like a real millionaire to live anywhere near there. Oh, and I'm, I'm not, you know, no, no one could, oh, you know, I would say no one can do that. There are people that can, but I can't, you know, so, you know, and I, because of my parents, I'm in a pretty lucky situation. However, <laughs> London prices are still just mentally just insane, you know. So there's that, <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, a million is not, is, it's not possible, basically, <laughs> you know, but anyway, this is how it's going, <laughs> I'm hoping the next update that I give you guys will be a gazillion times better, um, the week, like last week, like a week before I'm filming this, I was meant to be on a crime drama and uh, a few days before that they were like, no, um, we're not putting you on it anymore because uh, you can't come to us right now immediately and do a COVID test and it's got to be through us. And I'm like, oh, all right. You know, and it's really hard to get an acting job anyway, no matter what it is, whether it's background or, or not, it's really hard to get them. So this whole pandemic is putting even more obstacles in the way. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm working at the cinema at that time, tomorrow, like, I can't just change it, you know? It, it was just too short notice and it, it just, it's a lot. But anyway, this video is way too long. I'm looking at how long it is and I'm just like, mm. So, I'm gonna end the vlog here. Comment down below if you've ever had just bad luck with employment or anything you want to share. And uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Why have you not subscribed yet? Oh my god, subscribe. <laughs> Help a girl out, you know. And I'll see you in another video. Bye.